on World News Tonight. Fast approaching. Hundreds of thousands flee their residence as the deadly Bukhar Joy cyclone is expected to make landfall in Western India and Pakistan. Sudden visits. The United States' top diplomat is expected to visit China over the weekend after months of postponement. Boat capsized. A ship carrying migrants over the Asian Sea capsizes. What is the extent of the damage caused? More on this tonight. And a puppy daycare. A doggy kindergarten opens and sold to Eddie Crate and Pony Train, our very best friend. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and you are watching World News bringing to you the latest updates from around the planet. And we have a plethora of stories lined up tonight ranging from cyclone troubles to countries taking extreme measures to win wars. We start off uh, in our northwestern neighbor Pakistan where more than 100,000 people have been evacuated from the path of a fierce cyclone heading towards both the prior and India, with forecasters saying it could devastate homes and tear down power lines. Bipajoy, meaning disaster in Bengali, is making its way across the Arabian Sea and is expected to make landfall as a very severe cyclone storm. These residents of Devbhumi Dwarka in India's Gujarat state are being told to move to shelter. They are among tens of thousands to have been evacuated from the expected path of cyclone Biparjoy. Landfall may happen any time between 4 and 8 p.m. on Thursday. During this time, there will be strong winds of 125 to 135 kilometers per hour, with gusts up to 150 kilometers per hour. Biparjoy means disaster in Bengali, and it is expected to hit as a very severe cyclonic system bringing storm surges and lashing rains across a 300-kilometer stretch between Mandvi in India's Gujarat state and Karachi in Pakistan. For many across the border, this is the second time in a year that they've been displaced after last summer's devastating floods that ravaged Pakistan. In many regions, recovery has scarcely begun. We are in a bad condition. We don't have enough food or medicine for our sick children. The situation is not good. Several people have already been killed in India due to rough seas and high winds. Messages of support, like from here on India's east coast, contrast with warnings from scientists that storms are becoming more powerful and unpredictable as the world gets warmer with climate change. Over in the Atlantic, reminiscing the Cuban Missile Crisis that brought the world closer to the brink of World War III, the island nation of Cuba is once again in the spotlight of the geopolitical tensions as rumors of a secret Chinese spy station being present has raised serious concern on a potential threat to the United States in its own backyard. Birds chirp and lush trees sway in the wind, a scene of Caribbean tranquility. But just outside the sleepy Cuban village called Bejucal is what the U.S. government suspects has long been an intelligence gathering facility that once hid Soviet nuclear warheads. Now, large parabolic antennas are partially obscured by vegetation, and a sign nearby warns, keep out, military zone. The United States believes the base, just 116 miles from Florida's Key West, is used to intercept U.S. electronic communications, according to a Federal Communications Commission document from November 2022. And it's newly in focus after the Wall Street Journal, citing unnamed American officials, reported Washington was worried that China was working towards setting up a spy base in Cuba to better eavesdrop on the U.S., the White House National Security Council did not respond to questions on whether Bejucal housed the alleged Chinese spy facilities or whether it remained concerned about the site. China on Monday denied the journal reports. A foreign ministry spokesperson called the allegations a farce. The Biden administration has shared few details. Here's Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Monday. With regard to, uh, to Cuba, um, when this administration took office in January 2021. We were briefed on a number of sensitive efforts by uh, Beijing 
around the world to expand their overseas logistics, uh, basing, collection infrastructure uh, to allow them to project and sustain military power at a greater distance. Based on the information we have, the PRC conducted an upgrade of its intelligence collection facilities in Cuba in 2019. The communist-run government said Blinken's assertions about a Chinese spy base in Cuba are false, and it has dismissed prior allegations as a U.S. fabrication meant to justify Washington's decades-old economic embargo against the island. Perhaps unsurprisingly, local Cubans had little to say about the military site near town. I don't know. I know it's a military installation. You can't go there. During the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, Bejucal gained notoriety after U.S. spy planes uncovered it as a hiding place for Soviet nuclear warheads. Moscow backed down and removed the missiles, but it is widely regarded as the moment when the U.S. and Soviet Union came closest to nuclear confrontation. But now, the small communist-ruled island could once again be central in great power rivalries. America's top diplomat is set to visit China this weekend for the first time in nearly five years. The U.S. says the trip is to bring Washington Beijing communication lines back on track. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was set to visit China to hold talks with his Chinese counterpart in February this year, only for the trip to be called off last minute after a Chinese spy balloon was shot down over U.S. territory. Four months later, the top U.S. diplomat is now set to visit China for talks with high-ranking officials in Beijing from June 18th to 19th. The upcoming visit comes as Washington looks to normalize communication channels amid ongoing tension between the two countries, which also includes two military-related incidents in recent weeks. According to U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller, Washington has three main objectives during his visit. During the talks, Blinken will look to establish communication channels that are open and empowered to discuss important challenges, address misperceptions, and prevent miscalculation. The spokesperson added that Blinken will also raise a range of issues on both regional and global matters, while also exploring potential cooperation on transnational challenges in areas such as climate and global macroeconomic stability. While Washington does not believe this visit will result in any major breakthroughs, the main goal is to prevent any potential conflict. With the visit to Beijing, Blinken will be the first U.S. cabinet official to travel to China under the Biden administration and the first from any government since 2019. Now for some devastating news as the toll of the shipwreck of Greece waters is likely to rise as authorities continue to search for missing migrants who were on board. The vessel was carrying hundreds of migrants and headed to Italy when it capsized and sank. Greece has declared three days of national mourning after an overloaded migrant boat capsized off its shore on Wednesday. Dozens of people were killed in the incident. And with hundreds still missing, Greek authorities say the death toll is likely to rise. Most of those on board were reportedly from Egypt, Syria and Pakistan. <laughs> Greek President Katerina Sekalaropoulou visited some of the survivors, who had been taken to a warehouse shelter in the port of Kalamata. The city's mayor, Thanasis Vasilopoulos, said services had been mobilized to help the migrants. We've taken care of all of this. We've prepared the site, the toilets, the showers, anything that's needed, from clothes to anything else. Food has come for those staying here overnight and for tomorrow's breakfast, lunch and dinner. The shipwreck was one of the deadliest off Greece in several years. State broadcaster ERT said the vessel set sail from the Libyan town of Tobruk and was headed to Italy. Authorities did not confirm the ship's departure port. Rescue support charity Alarm Phone said it believed around 750 people were on board when the ship went under, while the United Nations Migration Agency put the number at around 400. A UN spokesman said Secretary General Antonio Guterres was horrified by the reports. Stefan Dujaric added that countries need to work together to prevent such tragedy. Greece is one of the main routes into the European Union for refugees and migrants from the Middle East, Asia and Africa. 
Nearly 1,000 people are estimated to have died or gone missing in the Mediterranean this year, according to the UN. Over to the war in Ukraine, Russia's lower house of parliament is backing legislation that will allow the defense ministry to sign contracts with suspected or convicted criminals to fight in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the roads through villages retaken by Ukraine's counteroffensive is littered with the bodies of Russian soldiers and hardware. The following visuals of this story is graphic. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. Russia's lower house of parliament says it's voted to give its initial approval to legislation that, if enacted, would allow its military to recruit criminals or suspected criminals to fight in Ukraine, with the promise of exempting them from their criminal liabilities later. Russia's suffered heavy losses now 15 months into the war and is trying to recruit more troops. This is the road through several villages in Ukraine's Donetsk region, which were recently retaken by Ukrainian forces. Journalists following the path of Ukraine's counteroffensive has found it littered with destroyed Russian hardware and bodies. Previously, the Wagner mercenary group was allowed to recruit its fighters from Russian prisons to fight in Ukraine but it says it stopped the practice in February. On Wednesday, its leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, said Wagner had 20,000 of its mercenaries killed in action. And in a rare display of defiance, rejected a demand from President Putin that his own Wagner fighters sign contracts with the defense ministry. Prigozhin's in a very public feud with Russia's military brass and calls such contracts, quote, the path of shame. Putin says the contracts are necessary to allow all Russian fighters in Ukraine to receive social support, such as payments to families if one is killed. But it's also widely seen as a way to assert control over the mercenary outfit. We're going into a short commercial break. Now we'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. In the Middle East now, the powerful Hezbollah group and its allies thwarted a bid by their rivals to elect a top IMF official as Lebanon's president, sharpening sectarian tensions and further dimming prospects for preventing a collapse of the state. Lebanon slid deeper into crisis on Wednesday when Hezbollah and its allies torpedoed their rivals' choice of president. The tussle over the presidency makes it harder for Lebanon to tackle the devastating financial meltdown that has festered for four years. It has also sharpened sectarian tensions, with one of Hezbollah's main Christian allies joining other Christian factions in support of the candidate, Jihad Azor, who is a senior IMF official. Azor, who is also a former finance minister, narrowly won the support of lawmakers. But Shiite Hezbollah and its ally, the Amal movement, then withdrew, denying the two-thirds quorum. It was lawmakers' 12th attempt to elect a president. Since Hezbollah ally Michel Aoun's term ended in October, the presidency is reserved for a Maronite Christian, and Hezbollah is backing its close ally, Suleiman Frangie. He strongly supports the group's right to possess weapons and is a friend of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Hezbollah has unleashed fierce rhetoric against Azor, describing him as a candidate of confrontation. Lebanon's Shiite Mufti has accused Azor, without naming him, of being backed by Israel and, quote, a president with an American stamp. The power vacuum, with neither a head of state nor a fully empowered cabinet, is unprecedented even for Lebanon, a country that has known little stability since independence. In the Far East, Korea's labor market remains robust, with data for May showing notable job expansion amongst the elderly in the service sector. Jobs in the manufacturing industry, however, backpedaled again. South Korea's employment figures remained strong last month. Data from Statistics Korea released on Wednesday shows that there were 28.83 million people in employment last month, of more than 351,000 compared to the previous year. 
This is the 27th consecutive month that the nation has seen year-on-year -year growth in employment. Statistics Korea says May's strong figures were driven by the continued rise in in-person and outdoor activities. The employment rate of the working age population, those aged 15 to 64, rose 0.7 percentage points year on year to stand at 69.9 percent. That's the highest figure on record. The nation's unemployment rate came to 2.7 percent, down 0.3 percentage points compared to the year before, and the lowest figure for the month of May since 1999. The job growth was largely driven by the 60 and above age group, which recorded 379,000 more jobs. Employment among those their 20s and below, however, fell for the seventh consecutive month. By sector, the health and welfare industry saw the most job additions with 166,000, followed by the accommodation and restaurant sectors. On the other hand, for the fifth straight month, the manufacturing industry recorded fewer jobs amid sluggish exports, but the decline was smaller than the previous month. Meanwhile, during a job task force meeting on Wednesday, the first vice finance minister announced that the government has selected more industries to focus on to boost employment. In addition to coming up with more solutions for the six industries that have already been selected, we are planning to add four more industries that have been experiencing severe labor shortages, such as the domestic construction and shipping industries. The government is planning to attract more workers through measures that include improving working conditions and hiring more foreign job seekers. Detailed plans for bolstering employment in the selected sectors will be announced during an emergency economic meeting in July. 80% of voters in this constituency in the heart of Kenyan tea country cast their ballots for William Ruto last August, helping the self-proclaimed champion of impoverished hustlers score an upset presidential election win. Less than a year later, it is hard to find anyone in Githunguri willing to speak up in his defense. Here's the reason why. In the heart of Kenya's tea country is Githunguri. 80% of voters here cast their ballots for President William Ruto last August. Now, it's hard to find anyone willing to speak in his defense. In campaigning, Ruto framed himself as a champion of impoverished hustlers. But a proposal to hike takes on petrol and housing has fueled a sharp backlash from residents like Jacqueline Wembui. The promises we were given as small traders and motorbike riders have not come about. Ruto and his allies say the tax hikes are needed to avert a debt crisis and to fund affordable housing projects. Under Ruto's predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, costly infrastructure initiatives drove total debt to 67 percent of GDP. Ruto also says he has kept his commitment to help the poor, pointing to initiatives including a microloans program called the Hustler Fund. Every hustle matters. The problem for many, though, is that the tax proposals come at a time when the price of basic commodities is rising. That includes a nearly 30 percent increase in the cost of maize flour due to poor harvests, the war in Ukraine, and a weakening currency. Raja Shah, chairman of the Kenyan Manufacturers Association, warned that higher takes now could degrow the economy. So there is always that sweet spot beyond which, if you tax the, the economy and the businesses and the consumers, then the, the, the demand is going to go down. So we believe we probably could be reaching that kind of tipping point over, whereby any extra collection of taxes will not in any way uh, increase economic output. The tax hike proposals, contained in a draft finance bill, have triggered protests in the capital Nairobi, like this one on Tuesday. The measures, being presented alongside the 2023-2024 budget on Thursday, are expected to pass in a parliament where Ruto's allies have a majority. But the main opposition coalition has also seized on the proposal's unpopularity and said it will organize more protests if the bill is passed.
Welcome back to World News and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A mummy that is some 3,000 years old has been unearthed near the Peruvian capital of Lima. Students from San Marcos University and researchers initially found remains of its hair and a skull in a cotton bundle during excavation. Further work at the Huaca La Florida archaeological site in the central Rimac Valley later unveiled the rest of the mummy. NASA released an artistic interpretation of a Mars landscape with color added to a composite image made from two black and white panoramic images captured by the Curiosity rover. A letter penned by classical composer Mozart over drama and his love life is set to be sold in July in an auction hosted by some in London. The two-page letter was written in the summer of 1782 when Mozart was 26 years old. The total prize money on offer at Wimbledon has risen to a record £44.7 million pounds for the tournament this year. TikTok CEO Shou Ziju confirmed plans to invest billions of dollars in Southeast Asia over the next few years at a forum organized in Indonesia, further highlighting the social and economic impact of the app in the region. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And finally, tonight we visit Seoul in South Korea, where a doggy school has opened up to educate and potty train our furry canine friends. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>